Now, the two major kind of myths I think that are out there with regards to the bank reconciliation is one, we get confused of doing the process of making a bank reconciliation and with the actual bank reconciliation report itself. In other words, to do a bank reconciliation, we're gonna go to the tab to the right and we're gonna go then to the accounting tab over here. And then we're gonna go into the, to the reconcile uh, tab and we'll actually start our reconciliation. I won't go into it at, at this point, but that's, that's the general idea. If you were in the business view, you would be going to, in the sample company, you're gonna be going to the bookkeeping and then down here in the uh, experts to the reconcile tab. So, and it, within there, we'll start the reconciliation later, but the general idea is that you're gonna be comparing, if I go back to my balance sheet, what is in our accounts on the general ledger. So if I go into our accounts in here, all the transaction detail in here, we're gonna tie out basically to uh, the bank statement. We're comparing what we have on our side to what is on the bank statement. And oftentimes we think about that process as like a bank reconciliation. But the fact that we do that is very important. And the fact that we may not actually look at the report that is generated from that still doesn't mean that we're not, we're not getting the value of doing the reconciliation. But what's actually the reconciliation is actually going to be a, a report that we're going to have. And it might look something like this. We can summarize it, but it's going to have the, the, the cleared balance, total cleared transactions. And this is gonna be the balance that will be on the bank statement. And then it's gonna have the uncleared items, the timing differences items, if there are any, which there may not be, if in some situations, we'll talk about that in a second, to reconcile to the amount that's on the register, the register balance. So that's what we're looking for, that, that difference. Now you might think if you look at this, and, and so in other words, you might think of it this way, you're gonna say, okay, if I look at my, if I look at my uh, reports here for cash, as of the end of February, I've got a uh, 95,944,006. Hmm. If I go to like, this is my mock bank statement, or let's look at it in January. In January, I've got 88,81025. If I go to my bank statement, maybe I have as of the same date, 61,241,85 in this case. The bank statement that's given to us from the bank doesn't tie out to what's on our books. Does that mean that our books is necessarily incorrect? Not necessarily. It depends on the situation, right? So now, so what I want to do is reconcile between what's on the bank statement and the books. What should be the difference? We would expect the difference to just be the outstanding items, the things that we put in our system that haven't cleared the bank, outstanding checks and outstanding deposits, the way we do that is we're going to check off all the detail in every transaction so that we can find, uh, find the diff find any differences. And if the differences are legitimate, they're things that we put in our system, but the bank doesn't know about yet, then we're just going to create those as the out as the reconciling items. It's just a timing difference. So you might say, well, the, well, am I doing that whole purpose? Why am I doing that then if I don't have to adjust my books after I do the bank reconciliation, even if everything's right? Is it just to get the cash account correct? No, it's not just to get the cash account correct because remember every other transaction in here, if I go into it, has another side of the transaction, an expense account, the other side was furniture and fixture. The deposit account, the other side was, you know, income or something, or, you know, it's, it's it, the check account, the other side was an expense account. So by verifying not just the ending balance, but by verifying every transaction that went through cash, because cash is the lifeblood of the company, because we're using a double entry accounting system, we're verifying the other side of the transaction as well. And we can see that basically on a flow chart here. So obviously on the vendor cycle, what happens whether we're on a accrual basis or a cash basis at the end of the day we expect money to be going out in order to purchase goods and services if i can verify the transactions of that money going out it may not verify every transaction in the cycle because some transactions 
such as accrual transactions, might not have cash involved in them, but it'll give us a pretty good verif uh, you know, a pretty good internal control uh, if I can double check those by a third party by the bank. And then on the, on the customer cycle, at the end of the cycle, whether we're on an accrual basis or cash basis, we expect cash generally to come in for goods and services that we provided to the customer. So if I can verify all the deposits and double check them to the bank, then we should be in pretty good shape. And obviously on the employee e-cycle, we expect money to go out. Now, 